Good morning, everybody. Oh, it's a bit cloudy and cool out here, and it's first thoughts on a Friday. And I have to start off with a confession, though. The first thing I do is confess to you that I slept in today. It felt great. Didn't have to take our grandson Logan to work this morning. He had the day off. So I slept in till 7.30. I never do that. Never get to do it. It was awesome. Felt great. But anyhow, um, first thoughts on a on a Friday. I'm thinking about all the scripture passages that we have coming up this Sunday, and just um, a word about each one of them. The the text we have from Acts, the ninth chapter, in which Peter raises Dorcas from the dead. Dorcas, who's a very well known woman in her community. Uh, reaching out and, and helping out the widows and remember down the the widows in that society were really down and out uh, very very bad position to be in socially and economically but here we have um, her helping them out but she passes away and it's what's interesting about the passage is the words that Peter uses to raise her up you see, she had an Aramaic name. The Greek name was Dorcas, the Aramaic name, Tabitha. Well, you might recall Jesus raising up a little girl from the dead. And when he said, little girl, rise up, in Aramaic, it was Talitha kum. And here it's Tabitha kum. Isn't that interesting? You wonder if there's some sort of connection there. Very well could be. Maybe it says Jesus is still active and alive in this world through us, through you and me. Uh, Psalm 23, the very familiar passage in which we see Jesus as, well, we see him today, Jesus as the shepherd, but it's Yahweh, God is our shepherd, and we are the sheep. <laughs> That's not a very... Um, flattering thing to call us sheep because sheep were considered kind of foolish and you know needed a little bit of help along the way hey but isn't that us too yeah but here's the thing what was radical about that is God being called the shepherd the shepherd was often used of the kings in that day but no now it's God God's taken over He's going to be our shepherd. And here's what he, he promises us. He promises to uh, lead us through the darkest valleys of our lives. That's awesome. We need that. But also, the other thing he's going to do, he's going to prepare a table for us. But our enemies are going to be all around that table. What? He's preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies? In other words, we're not going to escape all our troubles, but God is going to lead us right through all those difficult times and be there for us. I think that's pretty phenomenal. There's no escapism type of theology there whatsoever. It's God is with us through our trying times. Um, Revelation chapter 7, I think kind of even picks up on that theme just a little bit. If you read the verses just before our text that we have for this Sunday, you'll see that the uh, people are kind of shaking their heads uh, because they're saying, oh, what's up? The, the people, meaning the, the seven churches that he's writing to, because it, it's kind of, what? Only 144,000 people are being saved. Well, this is all symbolism that John is using at this point. 12 tribes of Israel. So there's going to be 120,000 from every tribe, which is a lot of people from each tribe. So in other words, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be saved. But that's it? Just 144,000? But no. Now you get into our text for this Sunday where it says, And behold, now I, I looked and, whoa, what did I see? Not 144,000, but so many people, you can't even count them. In other words, just hang in there, hang tough, persevere, because yes, you will be spared, you will be saved, you'll see salvation and victory, but it's not just you, because you're leading the way. Look at all the people behind you, so many, you can't even count them. Wow. So none of this 144,000 business. No, very, very poor way to uh, interpret that saying as a very select few going to heaven. Nuh-uh-uh. There's so many going, you won't even be able to count them.
And then John 10, our gospel lesson, which we have every single Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, and we take a different portion of it, and now we're in the latter part of it. And But it's important to remember what comes before this, that we have the other two Sundays in cycles A and B. You have all the I am sayings of Jesus, and two of them are I am the gate, and two of them are I am the good shepherd. So we have those. And now this follows that in which the the, the leaders of the Jewish people um, who were kind of cozy with the Romans saying, okay, enough's enough. Just who are you? You, you? you go around saying all this, that, and the other, but who are you? And Jesus basically says, what does it matter? Whatever I say to you, you're not going to believe me anyhow. You're not going to trust me because God has given to me those who believe in me and trust in me. They hear my voice. What do you do? You you plug your ears up. It's, it's what I say. It's like my grandkids uh, when they're listening to me or saying they're listening to me, but they have a little earbud in there and they're listening to their favorite radio station instead. Uh, or like maybe even my dogs over there, maybe you can hear them barking in the background right now. They're saying... Hey, we're getting a little antsy here. We want you to stop talking on your uh, video chat there and get to feeding us. <laughs> because I, I understand. I understand they have needs. I will get to them, all right? I will get to them. But no, here Jesus is saying, you need to listen. You need to hear my voice. Those who follow me, hear my voice. And they will never be taken from me. Wow. So there's a lot of powerful stuff in all of our scripture texts for this Sunday. So hopefully you sit there in church this Sunday or if you watch our, our service online. Um, but listen, listen intently, listen closely, because God is at work in our world yet today through you and through me. And it happens because we listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. God's blessings be with you.